and welcome yet again to our course series here. I'm Janet McKee, as you know, founder of Sauna View, wellness expert, speaker, and author. And by now, I'm assuming, and if you haven't, please check out our Triumphant Life of Abundance course at Sauna View, because this is one of the modules within the course series, but it's one that's later on. And so by now, if you are taking the course, I assume you have been through quite a bit. And because of our course series, your life is changing and improving dramatically. I know it is because everyone's been writing to me and it is fantastic to hear all of the incredible strides that you're all taking to go forward in your life to reach better levels of living. And this is what we're all about at Sauna View. I am just so excited. I just love what I do. Is that crazy? I just love what I do because I love helping you improve your life. So today we're talking about sort of an acronym that I created, R A R E, about accept, release, and expect. So what we've been talking about so far in our triumphant life of abundance course, which again, you better be taking that course, is we've taught you all about setting goals and what that's all about and what stops you from reaching your goals in your life. And then, oh, isn't the weather beautiful today? We've got a little breeze going, I love it. Then we've taught you about how to recognize the beliefs that you have about yourself and about your life and choose beliefs that support you better in your life. We also taught you about paying attention to patterns that keep repeating themselves. And it comes from thoughts that you have and beliefs that you have. And we taught you how to recognize these patterns and begin to change them for the better. We also taught you a very powerful module on looking at your fears and changing your fears into something that helps you instead of hinders you. Isn't that just like amazing? Fears can actually help you. So important to know how to, to do that. Then we taught you how to raise your energy and your vibration, your, you know, that feeling that you have. We want to get you to raise your vibration and dial into a frequency so that you attract into your life things that you really deserve and amazing things because you are now amazing. We also taught you how to regain your personal power through the use of creative visualization and imagination and getting the feeling as if your dreams are already your reality. When you get that feeling as if everything is already happening for you the way you want it, that actually raises your vibration and allows those things to come to you. Is that amazing or what? So everything you need is inside you. And we taught you in the other module about how to liberate yourself with the seeds of success. Those seeds are in you. And what we're doing here in this triumphant life series is planting those seeds and feeding them and nourishing them and watering them so that they grow into the amazing being that you already are. We're just here to remind you and to bring that out of you. So here we are now, right? We're wiser. We are more enlightened. We now know about all of these thought processes that we've been living with and we know how to adjust them and to change them to help us achieve a triumphant life, right? So we have all of these great skills and tools and then what's happening? Are things starting to shift in your life? Are like great things starting to happen? I'm sure they are, but also sometimes as we step forward, and do this work, sometimes things happen that are challenging. So what we have now is this level of awareness that we never had before. We're now aware of, oh, wait a minute, I'm thinking a thought that's not supporting me. I have this belief that this challenge is going to be bad. I have this pattern that keeps arising in my life that holds me back from overcoming some of these life challenges. So now we are wiser smarter, so much more enlightened because of this wonderful course that we provided to you. But I want you to know that this awareness is a huge gift. When you become aware of your thoughts and how that's affecting your life, that is incredible. If that alone is what you are learning from this course series, that is a huge, huge accomplishment. 
We know with the high performance coaching that we do, and I work with some of the most successful people in the world, we know through years of study that all successful people, high performers, pay attention to their psychology. They monitor their psychology every day. And what I mean by that is their thoughts and their thought processes, and they work to improve their psychology. That is a key, key piece to achieving a greater life. So this high performance work that we're doing and through years of research, we know the importance of all of the things I've just taught you in this triumphant life series. But sometimes still, we're doing all of these things, we're doing all this work, but sometimes challenges arise. And guess what? These challenges are actually gifts. Now, I'm not saying that every challenge that you face that you could actually look at and see a gift. There are some tragedies that happen in our lives and in the world, and it's very, very difficult to see any gifts coming from that. Hopefully, through any huge challenge or tragedy you may have experienced, you at least can see something good that came out of it. Like if there's a natural disaster, people say, gosh, look at how the community came closer together. And no longer are people viewing each other in such negative ways and how we're all different. They come together with great love. So sometimes even in a tragedy, something good can come out of it. But what I'm talking about here are your daily challenges. Challenges that arise and how we deal with them is incredibly important. So sometimes these challenges are something small and how we react to them can greatly impact the outcome of that challenge. And so what I want to teach you is how to, how to rise above those challenges and see them as gifts that are there to teach you. For example, you know I work a lot with people with health challenges and I've been doing that for over 20 years with great success. And so many people tell me after they've had a health challenge that, wow, everything they learned because of the health challenge was so incredible and important to them. And I know that in my own life, if it wasn't for my own very serious health challenge, I would never feel as fabulous as I do today. Never in my 50s would I feel so healthy and so vibrant if it wasn't for the challenges that I had in my 20s and 30s. And as a matter of fact, I know that my son would not be as healthy as he is today and live such a wonderful, high quality, healthy life if it wasn't for my health challenges that I had. So isn't that amazing? Like being in the hospital with a debilitating challenge actually gave me incredible gifts. And so many of my clients tell me the same thing. But when we begin to look at how everything happens for a reason, then it takes us to a whole new level of being, right? Now I know that my health challenge happened for a reason and a damn good one, and I am grateful for it, right? Because of the way I learned from it and came through it and now benefit so many people in the world because of my health challenge that I had years ago. So we like to think everything happens for a reason. And again, these are the regular challenges that we deal with in life. And it's kind of funny because yesterday, as a matter of fact, last night, my son, Nathan, and I were working on a key marketing project. And we had a deadline. We had to be done by 9 p.m. And so we were kind of tired. We both worked long days and we were working through this and we came up with specific wording we wanted on this particular page of our website. Well, as we finished up and we were hurrying to finish for the evening, we lost it. We couldn't find it. It's like, oh no, we put all that effort into creating just the words we wanted. So my son said, okay, we got this deadline. We've got to get it done. So he so brilliantly stepped back, took a deep breath and created a new page with new wording. And so we got together. He said, mom, look at this. We looked at it. We tweaked it a little bit and we were like, wow, this is better than the one we came up with earlier. So, it actually was good. It happened for a reason that we lost the work that we had done just the few hours earlier. And it's kind of funny because we both looked at it and then we looked at each other and we both at the same time said, everything happens for a reason. And we laughed. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. But what about even some deeper things? I had a situation recently at my farm where we were creating this huge concrete patio coming out of the main barn doors. And I hired this contractor and I told him, I said, okay, Andy, 
I want you to do this work, but you have to be done by May 1st. And he said, okay, no problem. We can work through March and April, and I'm sure we can work around the weather and we'll get the whole thing framed, the foundation, get it poured, stamped, railing installed, and I will have one of my guys do the stone face around this patio so that we're not looking at concrete block, we're looking at gorgeous stone so that it matches the foundation of the barn. So I'm like, okay, we gotta be done by May 1st because we have weddings at our farm starting on May 15th. And I need an opportunity to plant grass and to have the grass grow in so I don't have a muddy mess for these weddings. Don't worry, Janet, we'll be done by May 1st. So March went and we started, they started working. April, they got the concrete poured, the patio all stamped, it looked gorgeous, the stone block foundation, everything. And April was going on and I'm like, well, where's the stone guy? He's coming, he's coming. Don't worry, Janet, we're gonna have you done. So it's going on and the stone guy shows up one day and he starts working a little bit, but it's starting to rain and he doesn't come back. I'm like, Andy, where's the stone guy? May 1st comes and goes. And we're into the first week of May. And I'm like, Andy, we have to have this done. He's like, don't worry, we'll be done before your May 15th wedding. So days are going on, days are going on. Finally, I'm on the phone with Andy. I'm like, Andy, we're out of time. Where's the stone guy? We've had great weather. What's going on here? And he said, Janet, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get him there. If you want to hire another stone guy, feel free. Okay. What did I feel like at that moment? We're already past our deadline. I s thought to myself, okay, Andy, give me your neck. I'm going to strangle, <laughs> right? I'm like, what? They get in my head. But instead I took a deep breath and I said, Andy, I cannot find a new stone guy at this late date. You need to get this done. If you want to be paid is what I'm thinking. I hung up the phone politely. I took a deep breath. I'm like, okay. There's got to be a reason for this. Everything happens for a reason. Once I took a deep breath, cleared my head, calmed down, what pops into my head is that one of my best friends, Bob Rankin, who helped me work on this barn years ago, had a stone guy fix the front wall of the foundation. It popped into my head. I didn't even remember that I knew a friend of mine knew a stone guy. I called up Bob. He answered the phone. I said, Bob, I've got this issue. I have a wedding in a week. The stone didn't get done. My concrete contractor had a stone guy was supposed to finish. Who's that guy that you had helped me years ago? He said, Dave, I'll call him and I'll get his number and I'll call you right back with his number. I literally hung up the phone and I hung up the phone and within moments, I had Dave call me on the phone. Thank you, sweetie. And I'm like, Dave, he said, I understand you need stone work. And I explained the situation. He said, I'm just finishing up a job. I'm not starting another job in a week. I'll come out this week and we'll take care of you, Janet. So here's what's interesting about this. He came out and both my farm manager and I were looking at the original stonework that started by the first guy and we're like, well, it doesn't look as good as we thought it should. Well, guess what? Not at all. And Dave came out and he said, you know what? This looks terrible. We're going to rip down what he did, which wasn't much. And we're going to redo the whole thing. Guess what? It looks fabulous. This happened for a reason. So what would have happened if I would have panicked, gotten upset, said a couple choice words to my concrete contractor about him not finishing, right? I would have resisted allowing a solution to come to me. I would have blocked progress. Instead, by releasing, accepting, and allowing in progress and thoughts for a solution, it turned out better than it ever would. There was a reason why the guy wasn't coming because the, re the reason is the guy wasn't good enough to do the stone work on my beautiful barn. So everything is there if we just allow it to flow. And that's what I want to teach you today. So there's a good reason if we start looking deep enough. Okay, and sometimes we can't see the good reason. Sometimes let's think about something. I had a client who she told me this dreadful story about her son being so committed to this job and he got fired 
And as we talked further, she explained to me how there was some discomfort there. The people at this job weren't treating him well, that he, you know, that they were all feeling a little bit uncomfortable. So I said to her, you don't know what could have happened if he hadn't been fired. What if he stayed there and those people with bad energy continued to have an influence? Something could have happened. He might have ended up getting sick or hurt. So really, you don't always know what the universe has in mind for you, what God has in mind for you, right? So we have to consider that. So what can we do when a problem arises? I want you to consider this. I first want you to take a deep breath, right? Breathe into your nose, out through your mouth. <sighs> Give yourself some oxygen so that you can think clearly. All right, and we're going to, first, we're going to accept this. Right? Worry and struggle is like a brick wall that blocks progress. So we're just going to accept it. Okay, we have this problem. I accept it. That is huge. Like your whole energy changes when you accept first. Okay? What would that feel like to forget about the worry and struggle? What would it feel like? to release worry and struggle. Pull out a piece of paper, write that down when you have a problem and see what happens. And that is what we wanna do second. First we accept, then we release it. Just release, let it go. Create an affirmation or visualization in your mind of letting it go. I had a woman, she advised me once when I was dealing with the terrible situation where my husband left. She said, I want you to pretend there's a window and there's a crank and you're going to crank open the window and you're going to let your problems out the window. She said, just let them flow out the window. I knew a woman once, she was going through a divorce. She took her divorce papers and then we were at a bonfire. She threw them in the bonfire and just let the smoke, right? Flow, flow away all of her issues, right? What would it feel like? Okay, uh, you can do something like, what is what I'm doing to, with, in my life right now? When I have a worry or a problem, I hand it over to God. I actually imagine my angels, whatever your belief is, or God there with a platter. I hand it over to them and say, okay, here, please take this, <laughs> deal with it. I release it. Out there in the universe, the world, whatever it means to you, create something that gives you sort of a tool to accept and release. And it's interesting because when I look up the definition of accept, there are two parts of the definition. It says believe or come to recognize as valid. So accept, you have to understand and believe that something is true. The stone guy wasn't coming. It wasn't getting done on time. Accept it as a fact. The second part of the definition, Accept means receive as a gift. Isn't that interesting? Didn't I tell you at the beginning of this video that your problems are actually a gift? So the definition of accept is to receive the gift. I love this. I love this work because it always comes together. Release the definition. Allow or enable to escape from confinement, to set free. So take that worry, release it, set it free, let it fly away. Your whole energy changes and solutions are then able to flow to you. And I want you then to also release specific expectations. Do you ever go into a meeting with very specific expectations? I want this to happen and this to happen. And so with Andy, the concrete guy, I wanted this and this and this to happen with your stone guy on this particular date. And if I would have held to all those expectations, I would have had really bad stonework on my barn patio, right? So if you can also re learn to release specific expectations on how you want something specifically to go, but expect the best. You got me? So instead of expecting specific results on how specifically something is to go, Release that, but still expect the best. Know that when you release those specifics, but you do sincerely expect that everything's going to turn out for the best, it will. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to teach you a very simple little meditation that I learned from our mentor and trainer, Brendan Burchard, brilliant teacher, called the release meditation. And it's very simple. And some people, I had a woman come up to me once at a conference. She said, they're meditating in that room. I'm not going in there. I'm Christian. We don't meditate. <laughs> meditation is not some weird religious fanatical thing. It is about calming your mind and calming your body for good health, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. So release meditation is where you breathe in a few times. We like to say 10 times in through your nose, out through your mouth, in and out. Sit somewhere comfortable with your back straight and do that. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Then I want you to repeat to yourself the word release. It's like a mantra and you repeat to yourself, release, 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 release. And as thoughts come into your mind, and this is actually a trick for meditating successfully, I just want you to release those thoughts. You don't struggle with all these thoughts that are gonna come in your mind, you just release them, release them. And that is the release meditation. So again, you sit comfortably with your back straight, you take some deep breaths, really deep in through your nose, out through your mouth 10 times, and then you begin to repeat in your mind the word release. I like to do release on the in-breath and on the out-breath while I'm then meditating. I go release, release, okay? And then you release. So do that before you deal with a challenge or before you go into an important meeting or an important date or something. So here is the final key. Remember this acronym, A-R-E. This is new, came up with. This is my idea. Accept, release, and expect the best. Accept, release, and expect. A-R-E. So next time you're dealing with something in your life that's a worry or a challenge, are you able to reach a place of acceptance? Are you able to release and let it go and allow solutions to flow to you? Are you able to expect the best no matter what? Okay, I just taught you the accept, release, expect the best technique. Now, I do not want you all to be sitting around thinking, oh, that's all I have to do is just accept and release and everything's gonna be glorious in my life. What we teach you in high performance coaching, which is the next step for you after finishing this course, is work with me one-on-one, -on -one, is we teach you action is important. In high performance coaching, we don't just sit around and do all of this thinking. We're not telling you to do nothing. We're gonna teach you how to have high energy, motivation, courage, productivity, to achieve everything that you want in life. The most successful people in the world work on their psychology, work on their thinking, but they take action and they move forward in that positive energy and with great courage, energy, so that they create a life of true joy and fulfillment. That is what we hope for you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.